Hi, welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Today I wanted to make just using some 1mm or 18 gauge silvered round copper wire. I want to make the OM symbol. Now this is a stylized and simplified variation of what is considered by many a sacred symbol. So what I want to do first of all is show you the path that I went down to try and create something which I felt you might like to share with me. So my first iteration um <laughs> it wasn't very good <laughs> but sometimes it's nice to see what other people go through to get to where they uh, manage to give you something that you might like to be able to use so i started off by hammering and creating the symbol in three different sections and wiring it together it wasn't very good so i'm going to show you now a single wire variation as i say it is stylized and simplified and i hope you enjoy it this was one that i had several people request to me so let's crack on that's what the first variation looked like so we won't be making that but you could if you wanted to have a go recreate that quite simply with three pieces of wired uh, wire rather hammered and then wired together but we're not going to make that today i will show you what we're going to create today variations on a theme so this is what we're going to be looking at if you want to add a little bit of wire work up at the top to make that a little stronger it's a very very simple weave just holding two strands together at a time with an elongated wrap up at the top there i'm not going to teach that because i don't think it needs it you could easily hammer the wire if you wanted to strengthen that slightly so this is what we're going to work towards so if i just pop that up in the top corner for now we'll always have a reference piece to work with one millimeter gauge or 18 gauge round copper core wire and this is silver plated and it's around about 14 to 15 inches I've made sure that both of those ends are nice and flush and what I want to do now is just put a little bit of warmth into that wire to begin with. We're going to be using round nose pliers, bent chain nose pliers and flush cutters for today's tutorial. So I've just run that between thumb and forefinger three or four times to get a nice warmth and fluidity into the wire. So it's a little bit tricky to begin with because there's so much wire sticking off at the side and it's going to hit things on the desk. But all we're going to do to begin with is get a little circular form going as if you're going to be making just a loopy end. And I'm going to open and close those round nose pliers until I get a really smooth circle on the end there. I'm going to flatten that down, pop my round nose pliers out of the way for now and just make sure that I'm happy with that size. One thing that I will do is give that a really good squish between the flat sides of my pliers. And this is because I want to use this as my hanging loop later. If you particularly wanted to, you could run this as a wrapped loop up at the top. There is a tutorial on the channel if you've never made a wrapped loop before that will show you how to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of curvature in the wire coming off from where the loop begins curving up in the same direction as if it was going to create an open spiral form so i'm just going to draw that around gently until that starts to come up on the one side as if i say we're making an open loop there or an open coil so once i've traveled maybe half an inch i'm going to pop those bent chain nose pliers in grip that really firmly and just draw that back and around sharply on itself. Now, as ever, when we're making 2D, uh, 2D artwork, this is always going to be in flat situation. So you imagine if you're working between two panes of glass, we're always making the same direction changes with those pliers. So we're always working in a flat situation. So I want to close that up ever so slightly, not completely flat, but just bring that closer together so it becomes a bit like the hairpin at the end of a racetrack what we're then going to do is i would switch grip here and start that wire coming back on itself in the opposite direction and again if you feel that you need to add just a little bit more warmth you absolutely can just get that a little bit toasty and fluid don't necessarily need that to be flat up against the first wire 
just going to work as if there's a small gap between them and keep that gap the same distance apart all the way along. When I come up the other side, it's going to be the approximate same distance to here from the centre as it is to here from the centre. So I'm just going to mess with this slightly to make it sit exactly how I want it to. And then I'm going to pop the pliers into position and the wire is going to come down at quite a sharp bend now. So again, centralising the first loop where we started, drawing the tail of the wire down. This is where it's quite likely to poke you in the chest because you're working with quite a long length of wire. And what I'm going to do is take this bend further round than I need it to. So I'm almost closing that up. Give that a gentle squeeze and then open it back out again. We're going to support the top of the wire here. Before we begin, I've come down about three or four millimetres and I'm going to draw the wire hard back to the left now. So you can get those bent chain nose pliers in or straight chain nose pliers if you prefer and just get your angles as sharp as you want them to be. Before we draw the wire back along and underneath our starting point. You can hold the wire with your pliers if you need to. You could hammer this afterwards. I think today we will hammer this one just to see how different it looks to the others. I'm just going to bring that all the way along until it comes just past that central point where we started, going just past there. And then we're going to start coming down as if we're making the top bend just up here. So I'm going to use my thumb again to start creating that nice fluidity. And it's going to come out a little bit further than that first racetrack hairpin we made. And I'm going to allow the wire to just gently circle around. Now the key to this piece is that it's a single length of wire and it's going to go all the way around, which means that some of the changes of direction we're going to make are going to seem opposite to how they ought to be. And there's one down at the bottom which makes that quite obvious. So it's a case of concentrating and going in the right direction with your wire. So I've come past the end where we first made our uh, little hairpin bend at the top there. Coming down at the top of the design now, I'm going to push the wire back on itself again quite sharply. Now I've switched the grip of my pliers to make sure that I can get a really nice tight bend in there. Switching grip again. Coming back in the same direction and just allowing the wire to bend around. I want it to be quite close together down here, slightly wider at the top to enable the end of the design to be tucked away later. So what I'm doing is I'm gripping really firmly with my non-dominant hand now. And I'm going to bring this round to a centralised point. I'm just working on this segment now. And I want this to come out at the nine o'clock position, imagining our beginning loop is the 12 o'clock, we're coming over to the nine o'clock side now. And this is going to be a very, very sharp hairpin bend again. I'm going to pop the pliers in just about at the top where this starts to change from being a fairly flat surface to a curved surface. And the wire goes back on itself once more, switching the grip out, twisting that around gently, and just tightening that up neatly. Now, what can happen is that the top wire or this wire will want to flip over and become the top wire. So you just need to grip that carefully and give that a very gentle squeeze. I'm not really pushing hard. I'm just doing very small movements to get the wire closed up little by little. It's quite easy, in fact, to go a little bit too far and then you, you may find you want to make it again. Also, it's going to flick <laughs> in your hand. It's going to move around for you. So what I want to do now, if I turn this on its side, is replicate this form that we've created here in a mirror image. So I'm going to draw the wire around, again pinching with the non-dominant hand and allowing the wire to make the bend almost itself. Draw that around and back up until it's reasonably similar to the first segment that we made. And then it's got to switch and come down. So you might wish to hold on to the wire with your pliers. You might wish to hold on to it with your hand. It's entirely up to you. So this needs to be a reasonably firm, almost like a coil, almost circular section. I'm going to bring this back and around. 
Now what most wire workers will want to do if you've worked in uh, flat artwork before is you'll probably want to bend this section of wire out and draw it back around. Well, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to take it inside the frame we've just made. So I'm going to hold on to that tail and it's pretty much in line with where that central section is. I'm going to push that back over and on the top of itself and again this needs to be quite tight so I'm going to just squeeze that gently give it a squash to make it nice and flat and I am going to hold that with my pliers as I just get the wire to form back around on itself now again switching grip to what's most comfortable for you is key at this point and you might find that it takes a few seconds just to get that shape to form exactly how you want it to But it does take a little bit of time just to get that to go precisely where you'd like it to. You can squeeze it up against the other side if it's easier and then reopen it. Draw that back down and then we're going to skirt around this lovely soft arc that we made earlier. I'm just going to draw the tail of the wire back up towards the very pointed chicane. And just push and pull that until it's in the correct position for you. Now, for me, that's a little bit too close down there. So I'd probably take a few extra seconds just to open that out slightly and make sure that I'm happy with all of the forms and shapes that I'm making, because it will only bug me later if I don't do this. So you can see what I'm doing is trying to create almost like tram lines, keep the wire the same distance apart all the way around. And it can take just a few extra seconds to get that to go exactly how you want it to. It can be quite appealing to want to rush on, but it will make you feel so much better at the end of it if you have those tram line effects going around when you come to the end of your design. So one of the reasons I wanted to share with you the Mark 1 OM design is because people often ask me how I manage to get things the particular way that they are and the answer is really trial trial more trial and more practice so when you see something that an artist has created it's very unlikely to be the absolute first time they've ever created it and i see things that i'm inspired by and also in awe of every day the internet's a great leveler if you think you're doing well you see somebody else and they're doing amazingly well um, but we're all working at our own pace and in our own sphere of ability so just when you think that somebody's made something that's absolutely outstanding, they practiced for it and they worked for it. So the more you practice, the more you'll be able to get towards your uh, best, basically. So keep going is the answer. So we're going to continue on until about two thirds of the way up this particular section. And then we're going to make a right turn. So again, it's just a case of small movements to make sure that you're happy with your tram lines. And then we get about two thirds of the way up between the base of the little curvature and the central section. And I'm going to pop my pliers in at right angles and push that wire out to the right. And I'm going to take it past where I want it to to begin with. Because that enables me to then push the wire back up and you get a slightly sharper bend to work with. So the next section we're going to work on is this little beautiful detail over to the right. So what we need to remember here is that we're creating the inside of the curl this time. So you can use something to help you if you want to use a mandrel to help you. But my theory is that we've made that wire beautifully soft by pre-warming it with our hands. So if you go gently, your wire should respond by coiling for you. It, it kind of wants to do what you're asking it to do. So I'm just going to open that up slightly. I've made it slightly too small and then take that tail over ever so slightly so that I can pop the tip of those pliers in and then draw that wire back over to the left for a second and then down. Give that a very gentle squeeze to just get that back into two dimensions. We don't want anything sticking up. Give that a gentle squeeze and then a little bit more heat. The wire is slightly tense at the moment, so a little bit more heat just here. And then we're going to draw a beautiful fluid line around the outside and over the top. Again, trying to keep those tram lines as evenly spaced as possible. You can just help 
with those pliers if you like and we're going to draw that wire tail back down the centre of these two segments. Once we get that sitting approximately central between the two broadest parts, we're just going to make an upward turn back towards the 12 o'clock position and then slightly past so that we get a nice sharp bend before drawing that back up and around. So we're going to have a couple of inches spare, which is not a problem. It's always best to have too much than too little. What's happened here is it's just a little bit close, so I'm going to nibble away with those bent chain nose pliers to make that sit where I want it to. And I'm going to take that tail and I'm going to push this tail so that it sits in the first channel that we made at the top of this segment. So the tail of the wire is coming up and it's going to truncate just inside the end here. So I'm going to draw that over the top of the design for a second so that I can see that the tram lines will sit fluidly and they're exactly how I want them to appear. And it is fine little movements all the time to make sure that is exactly where I want it to be before drawing that over the top. And then I need to find my flush cutters. Make sure you cut the correct wire, measure twice, three times, and then put away your scrap before you get this to lay flat and inside. Now you might need to lift and just push that down slightly so that that will then sit inside the design. And here are some of the ones that we looked at a bit earlier. This one I ran out of wire, I didn't have quite enough. It's in a slightly heavier wire so I would have needed slightly more than I anticipated. So I just truncated the wire as it came towards the top of the design and that looks absolutely fine too. In this example, it was made exactly as we just crafted together today, but I've added some 0.4 or 26 millimetre gauge wire just to bring those sections together and that adds an element of rigidity. And this is in another one millimetre or 18 gauge silvered round copper wire. Now, because all of these designs are completely 2D, you can indeed work with square wire. It's quite tricky to get hold, hold of here in the UK, uh, but it is a beautiful wire to work with and makes for amazing wall art. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I look forward to being back with you very, very soon for another collection of wire work techniques. Have yourself a beautiful day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.